how's it going guys this is lino from texas main welding academy we're back at it and we're going to show you guys how to run a 3g vertical open root 6010 root and hot and a fill in cap with 7018 we're going to show you guys how to prep it how to do your landing all that good stuff let's get started so right here we're cleaning our bedroom make sure it's nice and clean uh, you want to work your way with your grinder back and forth you do not want to stay in the same spot and make it uneven so now we're working on our landing uh, make sure you do the same thing the same process work your grinder back and forth you want to have a nice even landing we're giving it a 332 landing on that once you finish up with your first plate go ahead and continue to do the same thing with your second plate this uh, plate was torch cut that's why we're pretty much uh, making sure we're cleaning up our bevels real nice and clean. If uh, you do go weld test, you most likely will get a CNC cut bevel on that plate. So there won't be any need for you to grind your bevel. You could go ahead and just wire weld the bevel and grind your landing. So right here we're showing you guys how our bevel looks nice and clean. We got a nice uniform even landing on that. Make sure your landing is uh, pretty much squared you don't want to have a little bevel on your landing we are using a miller cst 280 make sure you when you're running 6010 on your root and hot pads you have it on 6010 stiff before you do tack them up butt them up together make sure you don't have a gap here if you do have a gap once you split it up and give it your 332 gap it will you will have an uneven gap you might have a tighter gap or, or a wider gap so right here we're going to give it the gap that we want we want a 332 gap before you start tacking you could get a 332 rod 7018 and then you could use it for your gap to double check your gap we're gonna do our first tack once we do our first tack before you do your second tack always double check and make sure you still have the correct gap because that tack will pull or open those plates on you we're gonna be running a uh, Miller CST 280 if you're running your remote make sure your machine is in 200 and your remote you want it on 40 so you want to be running around 80 amps for your root pass okay so right here is on 40 on the remote but it's actually doubling up on the machine so we're running 80 amps we're going to run a first tack here make sure your first tack is not too big about half an inch that'll be good once you put your first tack double check your gap you see how right here it did close up on us so we are gonna have to open it up before we put our second tack oh so we were in the first tack it did close up on us we're gonna open it up with this wedge you can put it in there or a screwdriver and open up your gap once you get it opened up where you want it at go ahead and put your second tack guys we got a two tacks in already we got a plate position for a 3g which is vertical but we still right here we got to clean this tacks up a little bit feather them down just a little bit <clears throat> so whenever we get started we don't get no slag entrapment on there we're going to start running our root 6010 whenever you are running your root you want your rod pretty close to that plate but you want a 15 or 10 degree push angle you do not want to be pushing down if you are pushing down that is keeping your your puddle from coming up okay you're gonna have a heavy root pass on that make sure you got a 15 to 10 degree push angle make sure your rod is close to that plate you do not want to back it up <clears throat> if you do back it up you will be long arcing your keyhole will open up more okay so we're gonna give it a shot we're just gonna try to drag it push our root in there if that keyhole does start opening up on you whenever you are practicing at home start whipping start doing little whipping motions on it whenever you whip out whip out slowly do not whip out fast you got to whip out slowly so you could help drag that that keyhole with you drag that puddle with you if you're whipping back pretty quick pretty fast back and forth you're not letting that metal come up because as soon as you're coming down you're pushing that that put the puddle back down so make sure you you take your time don't get frustrated the worst thing you could do is back up that rod from that plate another tip if your rod is pretty close to that plate these bevels will help that rod stay right in the center 
So if you're pushing and you're pretty close, these bevels will keep that rod in the center. If you're backed away, you're gonna, your rod is gonna be moving around on you, okay? So we're gonna get started on this root pass. So we are running 40 on the remote, but we are actually running 80 amps. Remember, it doubles up in the machine. Uh, me personally, when we're doing your root or hot pass, I like putting my rod at a straight angle. So once you give your wrist a little tilt, you're pretty much already getting your 15 to 10 degree angle. Uh, you could try it like this, or you could also change the settings on your stinger, and that'll also give that to you, okay? Uh, once you're getting set up, make sure you have a good body position. Think ahead of where you're going to travel, and make sure you, you start and you ain't comfortable. Uh, I like holding the rod about halfway. If you hold it too close to the front, your rod will start getting hot as your hand. Hold it about halfway. Once you're pushing in, start moving your left hand towards your stinger, and that'll that'll keep your hand uh, from getting hot all the time or from you having to burn up your left glove all the damn time, okay? So we'll start right here, and then we'll bring it all the way to the top. Uh, you could do that when you're doing your root, hot, fillers, and cap. Ready? Let's do it. So right here we are running our root pass. Make sure you do have a 10 to 15 degree push angle. You do not want to be pushing down. If uh, your rod angle is pushing down, you will prevent that puddle to come up. If you hear that crispy sound, you're good. Make sure all your sparks are going towards the back side of your plate. If your sparks are in the front side of your plate, we're doing something wrong. You might want to put a little bit more pressure on your rod so you can get that blow through. Make sure you're look, checking right behind the rod. Make sure your putter is facing both sides of the bevel. If your keyhole does start opening up, make sure you start doing your whipping motion and the slow whipping motion. You do not want to be going back and forth too fast. That will prevent your puddle from coming up. So we pretty much run our root pass. Make sure you grind your root pass down. Whenever you are grinding it, you want to use a 1 8 grinding disc. You do not, do not want to use a quarter inch. If you use a quarter inch, it's going to open up more your bevels. That means uh, more welding time that you got to do. So use a 1 8 grinding disc. Make sure you're going back and forth. You want to start on your sides first and then the middle. I'm going to tell you guys why right now. If, uh, if you start right in the middle, your grinding disc has two sides to it so if you start right in the middle you're digging the middle once you focus on your sides this side of your grinding disc will be grinding the side your right side of, the, of your bevel but your left side the other side of your grinding disc will be grinding the middle again so you want to start on your sides first and automatically when you're doing the right side your left side of your grinding disc will be grinding the middle that will help you a lot and uh, prevent you guys from blowing through on your hot pads okay so remember that one edge grinding this focus on your sides first and then do the middle last a lot of times once you do your sides your middle is pretty much already taken care of so if you look at up close to this uh, to our root it's pretty much clean <clears throat> with overtime with experience, you'll get better and you will not have to grind it really, really clean. Right now that you guys are starting off and you're at home or you're going to go well test, you don't, you, you don't want to risk that job by not grinding it properly. Take your time, <clears throat> grind it down, make sure it's nice and clean, okay? All right, guys, uh, we're fixing to get ready to run our hot pass. Whenever you guys run your hot pass, turn it up a little bit on your machine. So if we're running 80 amps. Turn it up to 85, 90 amps, okay? You want to turn it up a little bit hotter. There's a lot of ways that you could do your hot pass. You could do the whipping motion. Whenever you come back, sit there for about a second and then whip out. Whenever you whip out, you're going to see your puddle form. Once you see your puddle form, you're going to stop right on top of that puddle. Whip out, come back. The other one you could do is pretty much circles step to the top step pretty much your circle 
there's a lot of different ways right here we're pretty much gonna do our whipping motion pay attention uh hopefully you guys can see it in the video whenever you step out you'll see that puddle cool down right under my rod when you when i come back i'm gonna stop right on the edge of that puddle okay so we're doing a hot pass make sure you keep your 10 to 15 degree push angle on that when uh you are whipping out make sure when you come back in you stop right on top of that puddle so whip out stop right on top of the puddle when you are whipping out make sure you are not pulling your rod away from the plate make sure you keep it nice and close to your plate if you do see your rod swelling up on the tip uh, it's pretty much already got a humidity that rod is no longer good so make sure when you store your rods they're pretty much taped up and away from humidity if your rod does start kind of not wanting to fuse on one side of the bevel that's called nail biting make sure you push that rod and give it a little bit of more angle to it so you'll be able to fuse both sides of the bevel <clears throat> when you are whipping back and forth once you come back in and make sure you pause for two-thirds of a second let that puddle fuse on both of the walls Alright guys, so this is pretty much our hot pass. If you look at our, our dimes, they look pretty good to me. If they're pretty much too close together, that means you were coming down too close. You need to spread them out a little bit more. If they look too spread out, that means you need to come down a little bit more. On whatever motion you were doing, you weren't coming down enough if they were too spread out. Make sure when you do, if you're doing the stepping motion, the whipping motion, if you come out and you come back in, make sure you sit there for about two-thirds th two of a second. You want to let that puddle spread out and catch the walls. If uh, that rod is uh, nail biting on you and it doesn't want to catch the left side or the right side, make sure you turn that rod or make, make a little hook or something so you could get it to fuse that wall, okay? So right here, the movement that we were doing, we were pretty much stepping out. We're stepping out and stepping back in. Stepping out, stepping back in. When you step out, you're going to see that puddle cool down right behind your rod. Whenever you come back in, you're going to stop right on top of that puddle. So you come out, you'll see that puddle form right under your rod. Stop right here, right on top automatically if you stop right here automatically the next ripple will stack up half ways and it'll give you your your stacking dimes really nice okay so step out you see that puddle stop right on top of that puddle step out stop right on top of that puddle so every time you step out you'll see that puddle cool down you want to stop right on the top okay um if you're doing little circular motions you come up and then you stop right here whenever you come up you'll see the same thing you see your puddle cool down you're gonna stop right on top of that puddle come out stop right on top of that puddle okay. part two which it'll be our 7018 fillers and cap Show you guys how to stack up your beads. 